So that is pretty good and pretty interesting, um, but it's I'm going to go one step further and look at how we can combine this Bach.score with things that we know how to do generatively in Max. I'm going to do some send and receive here. I'll just send to score. And a receive to score. That, just a clear little space. So, presumably, you'd want to be able to set these notes using some sort of generative process, uh, randomization or a drunk or some algorithmic way of setting them. And you can certainly do that. Uh, so, let's take a look if we just want to set these notes with an urn. Remember that urn is a random that doesn't repeat. Um, so this would be a way of creating a sequence of pitches where each note is used once. And Uzi would be our easiest way of getting all 12 notes immediately. Um, Uzi is going to send 12 bangs in a row when I click it, so urn's going to generate all 12 of its random values. And then uh, when Uzi is done, it sends a bang here, which we can certainly use to clear the urn and get it ready for the next use. And then we'll, you know, this is going to generate values between 0 and 11, so we'll get these up into some usable note range by adding 60. 60 is middle C, so we're just getting these. This is all going to be in the octave above middle C. And then one thing to know about Bach.score and Bach in general is that it works in cents, not semitones. And you may have seen this abbreviation CT. That's for musical cents. And so one semitone is 100 cents. And because Bach is built for micro microtonal stuff, it's built for non-standard, non-Western tunings, um, which is really, really great. Uh, it doesn't deal in these MIDI note numbers. It always deals in cents. And so you just take your MIDI note number and multiply it by 100, and now you're in cents. This is going to output 12 values in rapid succession. Let's take a look at this just using the print object for a second. What happens? when we hit the button here, we get 12 note values in cents. 6,300, 7,000, etc. So those are coming out in sequence, so we need to uh, capture, capture them into a list somehow. We can use the capture object for that. And then we want them to come out as a list. So we say capture at list out one. So we're capturing these as they come in. But when we send them out with the dump message, we'll send them out as a list. All right, so then generate them, take a look inside the capture. There's our 12 values, dump them out. There's our 12 values as a list. Great. All we need to do now is uh, put those square brackets around them like we saw here with add tempo. Bach really likes its square brackets. And uh, obviously, we, we can't do that by hand. We could do that with prepend and append. But actually, there's an object for that called Bach.wrap. And we need the attribute out t this is going to format our pitches for Bach just puts the brackets around them now we could send this directly to our Bach.score we're not going to 
because we want to make sure that Bach puts the measure markers in properly. We want to, to keep the notes within their boxes. And so there's a, an object called Bach dot beatbox, which has nothing at all to do with beatboxing. It's just saying, understand the measure structure of the music and create the notation accordingly and create the measure markers. And in order to work with this, we're going to have to use the first three inlets. In the first inlet, we tell it the time signature and the tempo. So we're 4-4 four, four at 120, or if you want to do it so that we're synchronized with the transport, you could certainly do that. Get that tempo. So now this is going to enter with the correct tempo into the leftmost inlet. And we want this to be the last thing that's set so we can use the done bang of the Uzi to send the tempo in. This are These are the pitches, so they'll go into the pitches input. And then we also need the note values. Um, and for the note values, just for simplicity, we'll use all eighth notes right now. And we'll say, the same thing here. Capture and wrap into the durations. We'll need to dump that as well. And we can have it dump these right before we send the tempo value. Now, we're getting to a point where we have a potential right to leftness issue. We need this to happen first, we need this to happen second, we need this to happen third. That's where trigger comes in. We want to trigger these three things. We want to trigger three bangs. First this one, then this one, then that one. And this object, you're going to use it all the time once your patches start getting a little hairy like this one is getting. First we want to dump this then we want to dump this then We just want to send that 120. So this is better. This is very good maxing. First this, then that, then that, right to leftness. Other things you can do here, if this is a little ugly to you, you can actually trigger the word, like so. Bang, dump, dump, and then you don't need the message boxes. Or, if you like the message boxes, Anytime you're doing a trigger, B, 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 that's the same as a bang, bang, three. Bang, bang is abbreviated B, so B, three is going to do the same thing as trigger B, B, B. Exactly the same functionality. And regardless of the way you do it, enforcing order starts to become very important in max patches when they get a little bit complicated, as this one is starting to get here. Um, so let's see if this works. This should give us a 12-tone row of eighth notes. And indeed it does. I can save it into my preset and recall it and generate another one. Clear this out. There's... Ah, I'm going to need to clear the uh, captures as well, this added my new 12 at the end because I didn't empty out my capture. So clear these captures and might as well 
use the same button to clear my Bach.score, clear that out, and now generate a new row, save that, clear it, generate a new row, save that, and I'm getting a different sequence of notes here each time I put these in. And of course, if I play them back, if you're working in serialism, they're perfectly valid 12-tone rows, but uh, most of the time we're, we're not working with totally 12-tone music, so we'd like it to be within a scale, and uh, a scale or a, or a mode, and, uh, and that's uh, quite easy to achieve. We do that up here in our standard max section, and we just use an eye table. This is one of the many, many uses of iTable. If you haven't spent a lot of time with iTable, you just need to. It's, a, it's an extremely simple object that can be used in a huge variety of situations. And mapping pitches to scales is one of those many uses. So we'll get take an iTable here and stick it in between our earn and our plus 60. And we'll set it with a range of 12 and a size of 12. So it's a 12 by 12 grid. And what does this grid mean? What does this grid represent? Well, on the horizontal, we have the input note. So it's going to be C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, And on the output side, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, but unfortunately, upside down. Ha! Huh. So here I'm just reversing this list.rev reverses a list. So I'm taking my notes, reversing the list, and setting a comment. And now that's correct. That's pretty close. And so the point I'm making here is that this is the basic function of the I table. C comes in, C goes out. C sharp comes in, C sharp goes out. D comes in, D goes out. So when a diagonal line is drawn across the I table, the input is exactly the same as the output. Every pitch that comes in, the exact same pitch will come out. So if we wanted this to conform to, for instance, a C major scale, when C sharp came in, this is not good placement of this, when a C sharp comes in, 
we don't want a C sharp to go out because C sharp is not in the C major scale. So we can just have another C. Or we can have a D. Doesn't matter. But when C sharp comes in, we want some pitch that's in the scale to come out. When a D comes in, it's fine for a D to go out because that's in the scale. But D sharp is no good. We'll have an E go out instead. F is fine, but F sharp is no good. G is fine, but G sharp is not in the scale. A is fine, but A sharp is not in the scale. So this I table is now remapping chromatic input to a major scale. And of course, you can put any scale that you want in here. Um, and if you don't understand what this is, you can also just try values that sound good to you. That's absolutely valid. This is going to save into a preset. And that's my C major scale saved in one. And then, you know, I can just like try something and see if I like it. Save that into two. But for now, I'm going to stick with my C major scale, just so you can see that when I generate this now passing, passing through this table, I'm going to get a melody made up of notes from the C major scale. You'll see no accidentals. So I'll clear it and generate. And there's no accidentals in there at all. No sharps and flats. And if I was like, ah, actually, I want, I do want to be flat in this. Now I can generate my second measure with a B flat in it. And of course, anything we make, we can save it. I've still got my other ones back here from before. I've got this new one saved here. I've got my two different scales saved, and I can create more. Here's a simple mapping to a whole tone scale. Beautiful, haunting whole tone scale. Um, and the interesting thing about this also is it deals with probabilities. What if I want almost anything that comes in to become a C, except for F sharp? Well, it doesn't matter, except for F, right? So all notes that come in will be C, except for F. And we can say, except for F or except for G. Right, so it will only allow notes other than C if they're F or G. We can say, okay, but I want more Gs. Clear it. Now, right, I get a lot of Cs, a lot of Gs, and one F, because the only thing that can become F is F, and I'm only going to get one of those from my urn. Um, so, so there's a lot more that you can do here with this I table, beside just a straight ahead mapping. And then obviously you would want to, because this, this, these are, this, this becomes rapidly unreadable, you'd want a U menu here. Remember, U menu is zero based, but preset is one based. Go to our editor and say major random whole tone and probability based. And now I can switch major scale, random, whole tone, probability. All right, so I think that's a good start. That should give you a lot to play with, a lot to work on. Um, and uh, hit me up with any questions that you have.